going to talk uh, about uh, when I was in in this little city in Morris, the little city Morris, uh, close to Chicago, and I I live with Larry and. Um, his ex-wife didn't like that I was there and Larry said she had uh, had uh, make uh, all women he have had uh, uh, go away from him she have crushed his relationship with other women and uh, and I, he have a answer machine, and when I come home from his job, uh, he always uh, open up the the machine uh, calling machine, and uh, it's of course it was Debbie the whole time, and. It was a loudly speaker he had, uh, so uh, we could, I could hear in the whole house. I don't know why he, he wanted to punish himself like that, but he's always had it loudly on the answer machine. And... Uh, and she was screaming at him that that uh, I was a whore, and uh, this was a whore house, and those things she she uh, she call us all kind of bad names, and uh, and after that she had coming in with. Uh, that she had a key to the house and I saw that I understood that Larry should never never defend me if something happened uh, I start to be scared and uh, I went to the police and uh, told them about Debbie and uh, I say, uh, last time I say about Debbie is the, the devil's name of his children. It's also Del Dolores, uh, D, 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 can they have that name? Um, I, uh, the, the police say, oh, we know her. The, there have been many that have reported her to us, they say, but they didn't do anything. They say they should tell her to slow down. And, uh, but of course she didn't do that. And I'd be more and more uh, frightened. And uh, one day when I was laying in the bath, tub I felt like I hear some noise like uh, I thought it was inside the home and I was laying in the bathtub and uh, I was scared to go out I didn't know what to do I was thinking that it was Debbie that had come in to to the home and have a have a pistol or some weapon with her and and to kill me and uh, I lay for a long long time in the in the water until it was cold the water and I say to myself I have to go up I can't lay here in the water. And so I went up and there was no one in the home. And But uh, 
But then uh, when it happened, I knew that I couldn't stay there. It uh, it was not safe for me to stay there, even if uh, Larry had fallen in love with me and I couldn't stay there because he couldn't defend me. So I I was on the internet and uh, there was a man uh, that uh, have um, a web designs business in Florida and uh, he said that he needed a co-worker and uh, told me um, his website it was the, it's called the, it's still there uh, it's uh, Joe Carton it's a it's a bad uh, should be a joke about much things it was a much bloody things evil things but fun in the same time. It's it was a cartoon, and he say he he owned that Joe Carton, and it it was so much people visiting the his website, and he said he could give me a job. So I uh, decided me to to fly to Daytona Beach in Florida and uh, I told Larry I I had a job I needed to go and get the job and uh, and he of course he was sad uh, and uh, I had money enough for to go to Florida but not more money but enough for a flight ticket and uh, on the airport Larry he didn't say anything he he is not that kind uh, very strange person and um, and he said bye to me and then I was on my way to to go to the gate to go up on the airplane and suddenly people walking uh, walking uh, uh, going to the side and uh, left uh, a path uh, in the crowd a, a path and I wonder why they did so and uh, then it was Larry was coming back and he was crying very very much so that's the f- it must have taken him very much because he was not that kind but he did that to me but uh, i know i know it today i didn't that uh, in that time but i know today that i have to do these things i couldn't stay in morris because it was not the mission I should do. The mission for God was was another place to go to. I I couldn't be there with Larry. So even if it was sad and I could have a very, very beautiful home and marry Larry, I have to go. And... Uh, I I come to to Florida to Daytona Beach and uh, on the airport port, I was so shocked when I come there and and Joe was there he came and he, he had like a hard rocker he had the like a leather clothes on, uh, black leather clothes uh, on uh, his head. Also, those uh, caps that you 
that the motorbiker have those kind of things on his head and he and it was not the same man I was had been talking to on the internet and uh, and he looked uh, very young and I but I, I, I couldn't do anything then to follow him and he was playing in the car I'm dynamite TNT I'm a dynamite um, and uh, then he uh, he stopped oh, very very often uh, we never come to his home because they have to stop and and buy a beer in almost every places we saw on the road and uh, and he was smoking and I could smell it was that he was smoking dope and so the, it was terrible I didn't know what to do but I follow him to his home and he lived with his mother and a disabled mother and uh, he he was uh, of course he left the whole time and uh, don't take it serious and uh, and he he gave me a bed to lay in in the house and uh, his mother couldn't talk he she walked very bad and uh, so I, I uh, could stay there in the bed and uh, if some days later I find out that he was not, it was not, he lied, the, everything, it was not, uh, he, he had no company, he had no website, it was not not you the carton at all uh, he didn't work and uh, uh, I was thinking sometimes if it was really his mother or if he it was a woman that he had in his home only uh, an old woman that he had in his home and uh, he was engaged with a woman and uh, that live uh, live outside Daytona Beach uh, but we uh, we have this house in, in the downtown Daytona Beach and uh, he's, uh, he started to first day he was nice uh, uh, and uh, the, those uh, black leather clothes he had the first evening when he come to the airport he didn't have them I did, never saw them again then he was uh, a normal man and uh, he was uh, about 50 years old and uh, in a in the evening at the airport here he looked like he was 25 and uh, act like he was 25 i didn't know that i didn't know that he have a multi multi personality d a d i d so he switched uh, personality very often and that was because he he was drinking and take drugs and uh, when doing that the brain was going crazy so he he changed his personality and uh, 
and it's all it seems like it's always in this uh, multi personality it's always a a child or a young person because uh, I had of course uh, sex with him he was nice looking and and flirting and and uh, I go to bed with him and uh, and sometimes he he stop to have sex and then he look at me and uh, start to crying and say I love you so much I love you so much I didn't know uh, first uh, it was a weird uh, way to act but then I find out when I find out that he had multi personality, so he was too young to have sex. He didn't know how to do sex. That's why he stopped, and only was crying that he loved me like, like a young boy loved his mother. And it was like he he didn't didn't understood we had sex, uh, and every uh, and it doesn't work, and um, and he could stop the car when we drive when he drive the car, I sit there in the car, suddenly he could stop the car, it was dangerous because he. Suddenly he couldn't drive the car. That personality was a young boy. Suddenly, and he didn't know how to drive the car. So it was only to sit and wait f for him to stop crying and uh, talking this about how much he loved me. And uh, wait until he come back again to... Uh, adult person so he could drive the car he could uh, stop the car in the middle of the street uh, and couldn't know how to how to uh, to drive and um, they, this uh, these things I come to know very well in the United States about this with multi personality to to drink and make drugs or uh, uh, drinking alcohol and take medicine uh, that I so experience very often from those people I live with and uh, and uh, I and uh, then he started to he 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 was engaged with a woman and uh, but he wanted me in the same time and uh, and I, he he tried to hold me he like uh, kidnap me in the house and um uh, and I, I, uh, I was uh, trying to to walk away from him, and I did it once because I didn't want to uh, share him with another woman, and I felt felt sorry for her that was engaged with him, that he he was with me in the same time. So I went away and uh, I I drive, I I got, uh, it was a, a black woman that come and stop, stop uh, with her car and ask me what's, why I was walking uh, along the road. She had seen me walking for a long time and I said to her, that I try to find a, 
a, a homeless shelter somewhere to stay because I can't stay in that house uh, where I am in. Uh, it's an evil house. I can't be there. And uh, and she took me uh, in her car on, and we drive around and uh, and I um, and she said she tried to find a place but she couldn't find and um, so she drew me to Daytona Beach uh, Salvation Army shelter and I I uh, I go in there and sleep in the night there and it was terrible it was so evil place it was a uh, they uh, they uh, closed the door for us. We, it was a closed door, like a prison. So we couldn't come out from one. We had one room and it was eight beds. Eight women was in the room. And we have a bathroom. But it, the door out from the building was not open. They they close it so it was uh, we were there together the women uh, we didn't uh, those women in the beds they they knew each other they were like a gang uh, bandidos gang tough uh, tough <laughs> I should not say girls, it was like men. They were very, very tough. And of course, lesbian. And uh, that's how God, God wanted me to show that he protect me in, in this situation. Because I... Uh, I get the extra bed. It was for camping, a camping bed I got to sleep in the night. And suddenly it come another uh, uh, a slimmer and, and much, much younger girl. I was 48 years old. So, and she was fresh, young girl. And she got also, uh, like me, uh, a bed for camping bed. And uh, and in the night I wake up. And it uh, it's uh, it's so bad, so bad, bad. It's very, it's it's on my memory, uh, a very one of the worst memory I have from the time in United States uh, because I wake up in, in the night of a, a strange uh, a noise from the bathroom and I was laying like, so I could see inside the bathroom if the door was open and it was dark where I was laying and uh, but it was full light in the bathroom and uh, those men, girls, they have taken this uh, new, new, new woman into the bathroom and they raped her. It's, uh, pulling in things between her legs and um, and I was scared. I, I can't, I can't, be here, one night more because next I knew that next night will be my turn to be raped, of those big girls, fat big girls, and uh, so, I went out and, and walk around and. Uh, I uh, 
and uh, on suddenly it stopped a car and it was this woman from uh, the day before that tried to find me a place and uh, I say I can't stay in that Salvation Army's shelter it's so very evil and I told her what happened in the night and I say I, I can't so she drive around and uh, to and uh, walk in into some houses and ask if I could stay there but she didn't find anything so she said so we have to go back to the Salvation Army's shelter with me and and uh, I I prayed I talk to God and I say, why should why must I go back there? But in in the morning, when we eat breakfast and in the Salvation Army, there was a, a television, and it, it was talking about it should be come a tornado uh, in, and. Uh, but uh, that should be a tornado should hit Miami and not uh, Daytona Beach. Uh, but uh, when we come closer, closer to, to the Salvation Army, um, um, uh, it uh, started to come in a tornado and we have to stop the car and we were very, very close to the water and I thought uh, the car should fly into the water because we were lifted up uh, some meter up in the air the car with us but uh, uh, it was still on the street when the tornado was over and uh, we drive closer to the Salvation Army and we uh, we were stopped it was uh, police stop us and they said we can't you can't drive uh, you can't drive on this street it's a uh, it's damage in the street they say the police so i went off uh, i say i walk to the salvation army shelter because i have some belongings there that that I wanted to have and uh, also I thought I could sleep there but uh, but when I come to the shelter there was um, a big tree have uh, falling over the the shelter's manager's new car uh, and break it in two pieces and uh, the shelter, the roof was lifted up and in the air and it was damaged. And they say that no one can be in this house. It's uh, coming so much water inside the house. So I, I have to go and get my belongings only. And then the only thing I could do was going back to Joe. And uh, of course he he was angry at me when I come back. And then he be worse against me. So he gave me a telephone. And, and uh, if I walk out from the home... He, he could call me in the telephone. I should uh, tell him where I was. 
and uh, then he he started to tell me that I was not allowed to go out from the the house and uh, so I couldn't stay there and uh, I tried to find uh, a solution on internet and um, there was a man that started to talk to me and he's, he wanted to talk to me in the telephone so I uh, so he called me and uh, Joe was, was out to his fiancée and but suddenly he's standing in the room Joe and he grabbed a knife and put it on my throat and say stop talking to the man in the telephone he say stop or else I kill you and uh, the man he heard that I changed the voice you, you know when you when you go worried or you have fear the the voice go down and uh, he said I know you are in trouble now I understand you are in trouble I have been in Vietnam I know when trouble is he said to me so he said that I call you up you call, he said you call me when when he's gone he said to me so we stopped talking and then when Joe was outside uh, the man I called the man again and he said that he he should send me some money so I could buy a ticket uh, and go with a bus to his place in North Carolina so uh, I I get a chance one day to go out and uh, go to West Western Union and to get m- those money, and I uh, and then I buy a ticket to North Carolina with a bus, Greyhound bus, and uh, and I didn't know how how to could come to the bus because uh, Joe had told his mother to to call him if I was go walking out and and uh, so she had uh, he thought he she had the control and um, and I uh, uh, and uh, when the bus should leave uh, he didn't go to uh, before very very late you know I have said that in in the other uh, episode uh, last time that it's like they feel it's like devil is talking to them they have an extra sense they know something is going on so he didn't want to go but then uh, when he was drunk and had drugs in him he walked anyway out and uh, he was I knew that he was going to his fiancée and I knew uh, it was 20 minutes for him to uh, to come back to his home uh, if he go very fast the fast way home and uh, when he was to his fiancée he always was on internet so I had contact with him on internet so I knew that it's 20 mi- minutes for him to come back to the house So now I have the chance and I have not done anything for to show that I was on my way 
from the house. So I put together all all my belongings in a suitcase and then I I ran out and um, I called the police and <laughs> sorry, I called a, a taxi and that was Daytona Beach in in February in um, in uh, in March was it uh, 2001 and it was a NASA car uh, event uh, in Daytona Beach and then it was also uh, motorbikes uh, Harley Davidson's uh, week in Daytona Beach and uh, and I call a taxi and I say to she that answer that in the taxi station, I say to her, I only have twenty minutes to to go to the to the bus station, take a bus. Uh, can you send me a taxi fast to my house? I say to her, and she answer me and say. Little girl, you can't order a taxi 20 minutes before the bus are leaving. This is Daytona Beach. It's in the bike weeks. And uh, she stopped. And uh, and then she said, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. There is a taxi coming here. An empty taxi. Uh, it was like she should faint and she says I, I send it to her to you she say and this how I I am um, I know God from this that he sent a empty taxi in those that most busy ever uh, time in Daytona Beach and uh, so I come to the bus and uh, go to North Carolina uh, it's something happened in Joe's house also that his mother and he told me that his mother had uh, Parkinson disease and she had uh, had a surgery on, on in her brain and um, and it have uh, taken away her her speak she couldn't speak so well a little could she speak but it was hard to hear what she was saying and uh, and then uh, he said that she walked very bad also and uh, one day when we were by ourselves she said to me come and see my my feet she said and uh, i look and she sits uh, with uh, her feet in in the water and um, and I I go down on my knees and look at her feet and uh, and she lifted up one foot and that foot had three toes under the f- the foot it w- it was paralyzed three toes that's why she was walking so so bad because uh, she walking on her toes, uh, and uh, as I took her, her foot, uh, hold it in my hand, and I say to her, "You need to have cottons, and uh, dry it very much, and have cottons 
between your toes because uh, it will co you get fungus the fungus uh, from to be wet and be together I say to her and yes when I say that I suddenly her toes come out under her foot and they were soft like normal toes <laughs> it was a very strange feeling to feel they come out from her foot and uh, when uh, Joe come home I ask him how long have your mother had those toes under her foot and uh, he said that she got she was paralyzed in her toes uh, for five years ago when when they do the surgery on her brain he said mm -hmm. so uh, i knew it was not something not a uh, new thing it was something that she have had for a long time so I knew it was a healing and uh, that make me remember that I I did a healing on on a person when I was 16 years old I was in um, in a hospital uh, I took care of a, a little girl and she had to go to the doctor and when the nurse come and get the the little girl in the hospital it was a, another girl that was about 16 years old that was in a room sitting in in her her bed and she say in Swedish she say uh, goodbye hello goodbye hello goodbye and I look in into her room when I was with the nurse and the nurse say that don't be worried about her it's she sit and say that the whole day long but she is paralyzed in her legs so she can't come out to you so don't be worried about that she say and then she told me to sit and wait for the little girl to come back from the doctor in the waiting room and was when I was wait sitting in the waiting room I heard the girl talking uh, goodbye I hello goodbye hello and suddenly I heard God talking to me and he told me to go into that girl. So I went into the girl. It's very, very strange for me that I did that because I didn't know God. I, I didn't know that voice. I've been not scared. I did what he told me to do. So I went into that girl that was sitting. Now she was sitting with her legs uh, over the the edge of the bed uh, the the legs was hanging down from the bed and uh, she say come come and uh, and feel my, uh, my skull and, and she I took my hand up on her her head and uh, I felt it was like uh, there was no skull, it was no bones, it was only like soft jelly under my hand. And she said to me that I have been in a car accident and my parents died. And she was very sad and she said to me, now I am. All alone, she say, with a almost crying voice to me.
and uh, I, I didn't think about that I heard her talking but I, I suppose it was like a telepathy between us something happened there and um, then uh, suddenly I heard that the nurse come out from the doctor room and so I wa- uh, went out and walked to the nurse and that have this little girl holding her hand and she have a paper pa- um, a papers in her other hand and when I was close to the, to the nurse she was started to screaming I can't believe it, I can't believe it, it's a miracle, it's a miracle. She was screaming and, and her the papers was flying in the air uh, because she held up her, uh, her hand, her uh, arm and sc- when she was screaming. So the doctor and nurse come out from the rooms um, to her and uh, 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 wanted to know what happened. And uh, all of them was looking on uh, to me and uh, behind me. So I turned around to see what they were looking at. And out from that room come that girl that had been in a car accident. And her uh, left side of the bra- brain was the skull was gone and the brain was gone that's why she couldn't speak and couldn't walk and suddenly she could walk and speak and uh, it it was a strange feeling but it's a feeling that I have when God tell me to to heal people that is like uh, it's not me uh, I am out from my body. It's like I am in a in a bubble. It's a, like a, nothing around me exists. The world doesn't exist. It's only me uh, in a bubble, and it's and a feeling that that's not me doing anything. So I I only took that girl and walk home with the, the girl and never stopped and waited to hear the doctor talking or the, the girl talking or nothing. I only went away. And that make me... I, I remember that in Daytona Beach and it... Like it opened a door for me that uh, uh, I remember that I could lay hand on people and heal them. Uh, because I did that after so many years, over 25 years later, I did it again in Daytona Beach. So I, I have no not a closed door anymore for for to heal people so i i took the bus to north carolina to uh, asheville it's a it's a, a a city there a small city and i tell you about what's happened there because that's was not nice place either but uh, one of the few times Jesus Christ have come into me and talked to me that happened in North Carolina that I'm going to talk about the next time maybe later today I'm recording uh, one more episode of my story uh, of my story how to to uh, that I know God exists and 
God is, is today. He lives today and he works today for this planet, for this world, for the, his people. I will talk about it in next uh, episode. Thank you for listening and God bless you.